morning guys everybody welcome to the channel so this is disclaimer straight off for you guys who don't like the long stories um, switch off go to another video so many of you subscribers have asked for the stories and you've asked can you have the longer stories so you have a choice now people switch off move on or stick around you'll love me and hate me for this one I'm sure <laughs> so this story is about a gentleman called Michael I'm gonna call him Mike uh, it's a real story this gentleman is American 65 years old divorced retired and I won't give you all the, his history. He was in the financial market. Um, he'd been to Thailand three times before, after his divorce. Decided he wanted to retire to Thailand. And he put his everything in place. He was in the position where he had a state government pension, or whatever it was for America, which was bringing him in. Um, 2,000 US dollars a month on top of that he had inheritance his divorce was a, a wealthy lady he had 10 million baht in the bank which is 250,000 pounds 320,000 US dollars 450,000 Australian dollars something like this in the bank in America um, and he decided that's it it's time he's moving he got on a plane said goodbye to everyone in america over to the land of smiles he decided jumped in just save the potato um, and he rented a condominium <clears throat> he opened a thai bank account he had a retirement visa well, extension retirement visa and everything set up so he found a condo with a swimming pool, not far from the beach, um, which he rented. Bank set up, everything fine. He had a couple of friends he knew in Patea, uh, similar age to himself, and he started settling down in the area. Most days he'd go for a nice long walk. Quite often he would end up um, just drinking coffee, breakfast, around the restaurants and things and wander around for the day. He wasn't into the nightlife. He wasn't going out at night drinking and womanizing. He was, and the battery went. He wasn't uh, really looking for love. He was, uh, you know, 65, he thought. Maybe he'd have the odd girlfriend now and then. And he had his friends, so life was good. He had money in the bank, everything was sorted. He had, um, no children and an ex-wife but that was over no family nothing it was just him on his own he was about five foot ten average build healthy and had a great life he was set up for a perfect retirement in Thailand now these things happen when you're in Thailand and even though he didn't intend to meet a woman, he found himself one afternoon with his two friends, both guys from America, similar age, on Beach Road in Patea. They were just sat down. Quite often they'd find themselves there. Just sat down, people watching, or watching the sun go down, and just, just generally chatting away. And this one day, in the afternoon, it must have been about five-ish in the afternoon, his friends were going off to a bar and he didn't want to go. He said, no, I'm not going to bother today. I'm just going to relax here and watch the world go by. So his friends went off and Mike sat there for nearly an hour. And he noticed in the corner of his eye a tall girl about 20 feet away, just leaning against a tree on the telephone and was facing the, 
the beach. And he just looked at her. And this girl just turned around, looked at him straight in the eyes and smiled. And then turned back around and carried on talking on the phone. At this point, Mike thought, very tall, very slim, very long dark hair, wearing a dress, not like the normal clothes that you're going to see girls on Beach Road wearing. But he suspected this was a lady boy because being tall, but he was intrigued, he thought there's something different about this person. Anyway, this uh, girl finished on a phone call um, and just moved forward to the concrete sort of wall, the edge wall, and walked around the wall. So she was sat on the wall facing the beach and she just sat there looking into the distance. Um, and Mike, you know, it's just you're intrigued. You think, is it a lady boy? Is it a girl? What's the story? His friends had gone off to a bar and he's like, so he got up and he walked across and he said hello and introduced himself. He said, I'm Mike. And this girl said, my name's Kung, K-U-N-G. Nice to meet you. And Mike said to her, you're very tall. And Kung spoke fabulous English really really good English pronunciations everything really good and Kung looked at him and smiled and said lots of people think I'm a lady boy because I'm so tall but I'm not and smiled at him again at this point Mike was ready to sit down and have a chat but Kung stood up and said really sorry I've got to go now nice to meet you Mike Michael, I think she called him Michael. Nice to meet you, Michael. Maybe see you again. And walked off. That was hook number one. Michael looked at her walking off. She was gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. He didn't know anything about her. It's just the way she was dressed in a nice dress. The way she walked, held her frame her long flowing hair, her smile was piercing apparent and he was stood there with his mouth open and as Kung walked off to the edge of the road before crossing she just turned back gave him that smile again and then disappeared. That was in Mike's head all night. He went off home, had food, all night all he could keep thinking about was Kung's smile. This tall, elegant, unusual girl, just by the way she had a dress on late afternoon on Beach Road. It just wasn't, wasn't normal, just didn't look right, it's just different. Anyway, he spent the whole night thinking about it and the next day. He thought, oh, he's got to go and find out more. He needs to meet her again. He doesn't know what she does, where she lives, nothing about her at all. He didn't know how he was going to meet her. He's going to have to go back to the same place. He uh, told his friends, met them again as usual, told them all about this encounter. And they just laughed and nothing. Anyway, off he went on his own. He went back to Beach Road sat there all afternoon no come all afternoon that was driving him mad now and she didn't appear off he went home again meal she's becoming infatuated by just the thought of not knowing <laughs> the, the, the tease he was just sending him potty he was ah, one smile had hooked him. He's just intrigued and nosy. He went back the next day again, spent three or four hours in the afternoon on Beach Road. And then again, about five-ish, he spotted Kung walking along the beach towards him 
from the Dolphin Roundabout end, from the Dusset Resort end, coming along towards him. He was somewhere around Soy Post Office, about that sort of area, on the beach side, and he spotted her. And she walked along, back to the same place she sat before. She got round the concrete bit, sat down, she glanced over to her left hand side, saw Michael, and smiled, but then turned away again. <laughs> and he's, oh, that's it, he's straight over, <laughs> straight across. Hi Kong, how are you? Great to see you again. May I sit down? And they, he sat down. And they got chatting. Now, very, very clever lady, this Kung. Very clever. She told him that she was 42. But as soon as he'd asked her some personal questions, she'd deflect him. I'm 42. No family. She admitted to that. I've got an older brother, a couple of years older than me. Um, but deflected everything back to him. And she started questioning him. And Mike just spewed out his whole life story in about 20 minutes to her. And she just smiled at him and listened. Didn't say anything. Why he told her his life story in 20 minutes, I don't know. But he did. <laughs> At this point, Kung said, it's lovely to um, hear about your story, Michael. Uh, I've got to go. Maybe I'll see you again. Up she got, off she goes. Again. And as the same gets to the edge of the beach road where she's going to cross over in front of the traffic, turns around, smiles at him and goes. That's it. Hook number two. She now knows that Michael is here to stay. He's got a rented condo. He's not going anywhere. He's absolutely devastated. He stood there. He's just watched her walk away again. And he still knows hardly anything about her. Okay, she's 42 doesn't know what she does for a living, he doesn't know if she's got a partner, he doesn't know where she lives, nothing. And he stood there and he, he's realised he, what he's just done, yet he has no information. <laughs> exactly the same, he's back to square one. And even more so, besotted by Kung. Instead of pushing and questioning and getting information, he gave it all. Silly boy, silly boy. So off he goes, meets up with his friends that evening, tells them he bumped into this girl again. Didn't quite tell them everything. <laughs> I think out of embarrassment, because he had, pff, didn't know anything. Had a meal with them, off he went home. Again, all night. All he could think about was this girl. Kung. Tall, slim, beautiful. Again, that day she'd been dressed in a different dress, but very smart. He was he was just falling for her, but he didn't know anything about her. She might be married, she might have, you know. She said she had no family and just a brother, but she might have a husband. So he's back to square one again. Next day, yep, yeah, you guessed it. He's back in Beach Road. This time he's gone later, because she seems to turn up about five. And luckily for Mike, Michael, she did appear again, back to the same seat. He's straight over again. This time she said straight away, hi Michael, smiled. How are you? And Michael needs to get some information. And he's just come straight out with it. Are you married? No. Are you involved with a man? No. And again, she's deflecting, starting to deflect, but he's come back and said, I'd love to know some information, you know, a bit more about you. What do you do for a living? At this point, Kung drip 
fed him some information. She'd been working in Patea for 20 years, or just over. And all she said was in the massage industry. That's all she said, that's all she gave him. And Mike knew that she was starting to think about getting up and going, so he said to her, can I take you for a meal? Kung said, love to, but not today. How about lunch tomorrow? Um, Michael grab at anything, he'd take anything, any offer at this point. His probably tongues hanging out with his drooling with his mouth open. So, yep, yeah, they've arranged a restaurant along the beach, um, a Thai restaurant, Western and Thai, to meet at two o'clock the next lunchtime. Kung's got up, smiled, said goodbye, shook his hand, and walked off. Again, the ritual, turns around, smiles, crosses the road and gone. Mike's like a, a school, he's just like a kid, he's jumping up and down with joy. He's got a date with a girl he met on Peach Road in Patea. <laughs> just doesn't, he just, yeah. Well, she's different. She's special. She has to be special. She's just totally different. Wearing the dress in the daytime, Beach Road. Not asking him for anything, not pushing him for anything. He's asked for a date, he's got a lunch. She didn't want the evening meal. Hmm, why? I don't know. If he goes for his evening meal, meets his friends, tells them he's got a date, and they've just ripped into him rotten. These two friends of his have been there for a while. They're like, what the hell? You've got a date with a girl you met on Beach Road. <laughs> they just, they think this is hilarious that, you know, the normal, it's just totally not the normal. And they think, and he's, they can see he's absolutely fallen for her. Anyway, they rip into him all evening. He goes home. And he starts thinking about what they've said and he's like, well, she can't be a girl who works in a bar, she can't be a freelancer. She's, she would come straight home with me, I'd give her some money and that would be that. She's not asked for anything. She's different, she's special. She's got to be. Hmm. Next day comes. Michael smartens himself up, put some nice trousers on, nice shirt. He's at the restaurant, 30 minutes early. <laughs> Sat uh, on the front table, so it's almost next to the pavement, but you can see the beach across the road. And exactly on two o'clock, Kung comes walking around the corner. Well, on time, to the minute. She's walked into the restaurant, he's stood up and uh, waved at her. <clears throat> She's come over. He's gone round and moved her seat for her, gentleman. Put her at the table and sat down opposite her. And they've uh, ordered a drink, and they're looking at the menu. And he's immediately into the question mode. Come on, come, tell me about your life, what's, you know, what, everything he's asking and she's like I don't really like talking about my personal life um, to strangers <laughs> um, I don't really know you and uh, I'm not not that comfortable at this point and that, that's just like slap in your face Michael you just slow down boy <coughs> he can't believe it he's like anyway they order food and if Kung had led Lent across the table and just rubbed her hand down his face with a bit of affection, I'm sure Michael would have reached the climax there and then. <laughs> Kung had him eating out of her hand, drooling at her every, at her every spoken word. 
hook three, totally hooked. She knew that he was besotted. Now at this moment, nearly finished the food, Michael is exploding, he's just like not thinking straight. And he turns around to Kung and says, I've fallen for your looks and your personality and just fallen for you. You're a gorgeous, so different. If I gave you 2,000 baht, would you come back to my apartment? What do you think the reaction was? 2,000 baht, this is a few years ago, is a lot of money. Three quarters of the way through the food, Kung stood up and said to Michael, I'm not that sort of girl, Michael. You've misunderstood or not read the situation. I'm just not that sort of person. And she's about, Michael's immediately spotted, she's about to walk and that's it, gone. Luckily, Michael, straight into action, full apology, jumped up, said God knows what, but begged her to stay and was so apologetic, didn't mean it in this way, I'm so sorry, oh my, and please, I love to get to know you better, please, please, begging her. Kung just stood there looking at him with daggers. And she said, okay, I understand. A lot of guys come here for girls and believe they can purchase girls. I do understand. I understand your mistake. Maybe I've come across in the wrong way. She said, I didn't mean to. And she sat back down and carries on eating. Michael's just, his heart's in his mouth. He's just, oh God, I've nearly lost her. And then starts spewing out more rubbish about of his life and and now he's lonely he's saying and looking for love hook four Kung is sat there he has just dropped himself right in it his whole life story everything and now his feelings and at this point she's total control so that's part one I told you you'd hate me I'll see you in part two bye for now